I mean, I get pulled over, but uh, I'm a firefighter, so. You want a normal ass truck? This is everything but, but I'm all about that ass girl, everything but. 2006 Ford F-150 Super Cab, the official car of your middle school's upcoming production of Your Car is a Giant Phallus, Charlie Brown. The middle 2000s F-150s were for knife guys. You know the guys who always have a knife on them, which is, which is fine, except when they start drinking, and out comes the knife, and they're waving it around, they're playing with it, they point at you with it, and do that thing in their hair, they keep opening and closing it. Knife guys. 2006 was a strange year. The Crocodile Hunter got killed by some asshole Stingray. Disney Pixar released Cars, a movie. Probably ended up creating a few future gearheads, although we're not likely to see the fruits of that harvest for another 15 years anyway. And Facebook finally got rid of the whole thing where you have to have a college email address to join. Something that had once felt fairly exclusive was suddenly open to everyone. Like when you bag someone out of your league and you go to brag about it, only to find out you were the last one to smash. The thrill of exclusivity is gone, and it was the same way with car culture. Everyone was a car guy, it seemed, in 2006. People who didn't know the difference between a spark plug and a buck plug were sounding off opinions about how CVT transmissions were the devil. And this is because 2006 was a watershed year for the automotive industry, representing one of its best years on record. Everyone was a car guy because everyone was buying new in 06. There was one new car sold for every Every 17 Americans in 2006. Not just used cars, new cars. So you had a higher volume of people doing research into new purchases, and people enjoying an inflated sense of their own knowledge based on that experience. The 2006 Ford F-150 Super Cab is a representation of that auto industry boom. Suddenly, the more standard American fare was in vogue again. You could see it in the cars Ford was putting out at the time, with your Focuses and Explorers serving up a more domesticated experience, while the Econoline cargo vans and the F-150s were emblems of the working man. It was America in big, bold letters. And that's what the F-150 Super Cab is. It's America, the stars and bars, and a big fat ass. For reference, Super Cab refers to the in-between trim between a standard cab, extended cab, and crew cab. A standard cab truck is just, it doesn't have a back. The window is right behind your head. Extended cab, is it's still only two doors, and there is back seats behind the front seats, but they're just those weird jumper things. Basically stools with seat belts. Super cab, it has four doors, but it has these rear suicide doors that can only be opened when the main front doors are open. And quad cab, well, quad cab or crew cab, that's four doors. It's a four-door truck. That's what it's referring to. The F-150. Go up to any non-car guy and say, quick, off the top of your head, name a truck. Uh, uh. F-150. They will always say F-150 first. They may not even know who makes it, but they say F-150 because that alphanumeric designation is to trucks what Xerox is to copiers, BIC is to lighters, Posi Traction is to limited slip differentials, and Ronald Reagan is to the presidency. The one category definer who by virtue or vice, becomes the brand generic. This Super Cab comes with 4x4 off-road trim, which offers the option for 20-inch alloy wheels because of reasons. And this particular truck has the 5.4-liter V8, an automatic transmission, four-wheel drive. It's got a Flowmaster Series 40 exhaust, but it's stock otherwise-ish. The owner keeps the topper on in order to keep everything weighed and balanced. After all, something this huge has to be, since you're going to be using it for work purposes. And also trucks, even big ones like this, still are front weight biased. And then there's a bit of bro science that goes on with keeping the topper on your truck. It's supposed to get better fuel economy because it makes it smoother. You guys can argue about that amongst yourselves. But let's talk about size. There's a nook in every Christian town where the devil has jurisdiction. And just like the gay bar on the corner keeps the church pews full every Sunday, the F-150 keeps people from ever messing around with you on the open road. We filmed this in Los Angeles, and as past videos will show you, there's always been a certain amount of stress for us when it comes to driving in a big-ass metropolitan area like LA. But this wasn't the case with this F-150. The truck offers the kind of confidence that you don't get with other trucks. You might not know where you are or how to LA, but you can rest easy knowing that you've got size on your side. This truck 
is the right of way because people will just let you through rather than having to deal with you barreling down on them like the monolith from 2001. I am a man and my pubes are legal tender in East India and parts of Omaha. F-150, as American as forming your own band and then quitting that band when you don't become famous right away. Ford F-150, the official truck of I married my practice girl and pooped out a horde of practice children. F-150, for grown man posturing. It's squatting dick first over the toilet so your piss stream sounds stronger to the guy waiting outside the door. This sticker placates police. No red line, it just revs forever. And thank you, Ford, for giving us HVAC controls we can operate without looking. Look, there it is. How hard do you want it? How hot do you want it? And where do you want it? But again, this is 2006, so manufacturers still hadn't figured out that all we want for interior power options is USB and USB only. Life is the acquisition of keys. Car keys, house keys, office keys, and yes, the keys to a Ford F-150. Carry them with a certain responsibility. You're grown, son. You'll be expected to handle this and not to embarrass the rest of us. It's a responsibility that feels fully American and how it's blown out of proportion. Go to enough message boards and you'll see how Ford trucks are revered by their owners. And while that's true of just about any car, not every car stands as a symbol of its own country in the way this does. And no other truck is damned by Chevy by this much. Chevy guys hate the F-150. I mean, these are the GM guys who think utility truck technology should have stopped with the C-10. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, and another reason GM guys hate the F-150? Here's the big one. Girls like Fords. Oh, they don't like that. Oh, Girls like F-150s. When a girl buys a truck, she buys an F-150 almost every time. Yeah, 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 especially the I'm country girls. Yeah, yeah, I'm country, but I live in Lafayette Hill. And they're the ones buying the trucks new. They're the ones buying the F-150s and just dre and just having that snap-on cover that goes around the bed and leaving it on. I will drive a truck. Guys do this too. But the I'm country guys gravitate more toward Dodge Rams. I'm country, but I live in Emmaus. I'm country, but I went to school at Burke's Catholic. You can go from a commoner to a king sitting in an F-150. You simply feel elevated in a way. A short, pink, balding man with a belly only a union could grow and a dry disposition can still feel like the ruler of a small country in an F-150. In some ways, it's exhilarating, and in others, it's sobering like the ending to Ethan Frome or the realization that at the end of the day, a truck can only fuel an identity. It can't be the identity. Born in October 1924, the son of an Italian restaurateur, denied from serving in the Second World War, rheumatic fever left his heart functions quite poor, but he eventually became the president of Ford. Whoa, who am I talking about? Whoa, who am I talking about? And oh, by the way, this guy's still alive. And if you guess right, you'll win a big ass prize. Except not really, guys. Whoa, not really, guys.